So welcome back to CIS 126. Once again, I'm your instructor, Victor Campos. As a reminder, the class is being recorded for playback. So we're on week two of the class now. And again, thinking about it in terms of a regular semester, we had 16 weeks to leisurely go through the material. But here in the summer, it's all condensed down to nine weeks. So we have this week where we're starting to set up ideas and plans of things. And it's going to be kind of interactive here. So uh, make sure you've got the chat box ready on your computer. I'll be asking several things and then we'll be responding because um, it's about brainstorming and idea gathering and planning and such. So I'm going to go through the uh, module briefly, and then we'll get into the main material, which will then lead into the assignment, of course. So I'll start with the welcome message briefly. This week's assignment is going to be a, um, a discussion style where you're going to post and respond to people. Remember, I usually do those types of assignments back and forth, something you submit only to me or something where you respond. Remember, if you want to get full credit, you do have to do the responses. So I'll cover that in a moment. And this week is about ideas and planning and such. Now, we've had back on part one, the uh, assignment of a plot, and that plot was for uh, the movie, the movie project. And you could use that as a jumping off point for the new projects, but um, the new project of this class will be an interactive game. So your previous plot might have been more passive about this happens and that happens and then the end. Well, now it's going to be more interactive. There's going to be a player playing a game based on your character and original environment and ideas from back on part one. So you might have to tweak the plot a bit because there's going to be more interactivity, more, um, more that you can do work with on, uh, on the game. And I forgot something in my office, but I'll get it in a moment to show you an example. And later. Um, so part of the way that a game will work is there's a general flow chart there's a general idea of how the game will run, unless you're doing like a very open world game where nothing matters and people can do what they want. Usually there's gonna be some sort of beginning, middle and end even to a game. And even something very open world like Minecraft, I suppose, you still will have an, uh, sort of a path of a flow chart. You can't build this unless you've done that. You can't reach this area until you've done that. So there's still a bit of a flow even to an open world game. The assignment is going to be based on the flow, the general idea of your game as a discussion type of assignment. Usual the live session here, the usual info. And so uh, we're definitely going to be using uh, the chat for responses and so forth, because brainstorming will be a back and forth thing. It'll just not be about me as a monologue to you. It'll be a dialogue back and forth on things. I'll put the usual notes and recording there, example code and all of that. The, um, the assignment that's coming up is going to be based on this um, uh, flow chart that we're going and brainstorming that we're about to do in a moment. But let me preview what the flow chart will be. Now I wanna say, first of all, you can do this on digitally on animate or any other graphic software, Procreate, Photoshop, whatever, or you can do it on regular old paper and pencil. It might be easier to do your ideas on paper and pencil and such, and that'll be fine. You obviously have to scan it or take a photo of it to upload it to Canvas. But the idea is you're gonna do some planning. When I do the lecture here, this will make more sense, of course. You're gonna create a flowchart file, and you can do it in Animate, set yourself up in a folder, I have a little recommendation here, different than ever. Uh, you probably want a big dimensions of your project. This is gonna be a planning document. 
So it doesn't matter that it's not the HD dimensions that we usually do. It's a big old square, just giving you more space for more ideas. So if you use Animate or other software, think about putting it as a big file. Frame rate doesn't matter. 24. Or if you want to do it on paper and pencil, you can do it on a little piece of paper or a big one, whatever. Paper, pencil, pens, colored pencils, Copic markers, whatever you want. I'm going to create boxes that show screens of content connected with lines. Again, I'll do the main lecture, what this actually means in a moment. But it's going to be, here's a part of the the game, the quest that the character is in, and then it leads over to this part of the game. Well, that's got a branch that can move from here or down to here. So those are connected in that way. So flowchart boxes connecting the various parts of your game. Um, you could put little drawings, little sketches in those boxes if you want, or just a little bit of text saying, you know, battling the dragon here. You can say, picked up the treasure box there. Or both. If you want to do a little bit of sketching, it could be, of course, um, stick figures. Uh, and then the text could be one word or one sentence. You could say here, cross the bridge, whatever. Or both. You're going to need at least five boxes, five scenes, five areas of your game. A title scene. This is the very first screen that people will see when your game starts up. It can just be the title of the game, it could be an animation, it could be a preview, a prologue, a cool cutscene before the game starts. Some sort of help screen, a screen where the player goes to learn about the game or the world or anything that'd be relevant to them before they play, the tutorial. At least one main game screen, most of you are gonna put like 10 of them, which is great because you have lots of ideas, but at least one regular scene, one regular one box of what the game regularly will look like, typical gameplay. Good ending and bad ending. You can have multiple good endings, multiple bad endings, that's fine. But I'm looking for at least five boxes, five screens of content, five things that will happen in your game. I did put it here, you know, it's very open-ended as usual, these assignments. Uh, not every game has to have a win or every game has to have a, a lose but I do want to see differentiation between a couple of endings. It'll make more sense once we do the lecture. And then, um, however you made this flow chart, if you did it on paper, you'll have to take a photo of it, put it up to your web camera right there and have it take a photo, uh, scan it, whatever, and upload it to Canvas. It may be a JPEG or whatever if you scanned it. If you did animate, um, it will, um, you can, you want to save it as a PNG file as we've done before and upload it to Canvas. If you use other apps, I don't know, you could do this in Word if you want, I guess, but in there you have to convert it to a PDF. You have to be able to see your, um, flow chart easily once you get into the discussion here. We just want to see it right away. We don't want to have to download it, put it in another app, etc. We want to see it right away. And that'll be either as a PNG or a PDF. Right? Like one little sentence, general idea of what the game is going to be. So back on part one, my character defeated the robot villain. And now in this, the game, uh, my character is going to go find the quest of the whatever. So you're going to also explain a little bit about the game. One sentence, two or three, whatever. Respond to classmates. Make sure you respond to two classmates for full credit. Tell us what you liked about their idea or flow chart of their game. Is there anything that you would suggest to it? Like, oh, you wrote here that in this box, this is going to happen. It would be cool if that would have an alternate secret ending as well. Right? Just give some feedback, some thoughts about how they could further add to their plot, to their flow chart. And the grading right there. Actually, I think I made a little mistake. There should be 15 points as usual, not between 15 points or 10 points in this class. I'm teaching two classes and one is 15 and one is 10. I think it's 15 points. Let's check on the syllabus. Yeah, should be 15 points. <clears throat> I'll have to fix the, the grading on that. It'll be 15 points. But um, those are the points that you will need to, to deal with and um, once we do this main lecture and actual ideas and such, it'll make sense. Do a quick fix there. So questions or comments on the chat box?
before uh, we do this lecture. So if this is 15 points, how do we do the math here? One, two, three, four, 15 divided by four. So you're seeing behind the scenes how instructors do the hard job of grading. So three or four, it's okay. So three and three and three. Rise there, upload, flow chart. Now let's say two here, it doesn't matter too much there, <clears throat> but the details matter. And replies are good too, oops. 14 points. Uh, let's make it 4.5 over here. Too much math, but this will work. There we go. All right, so it'll be 15 points, as all assignments will be, except for the final. And then uh, and down there. The wrap-up is just to say, here's what we did. And um, next week, we're, we're going to start to set up our, our actual project file and start adding to it and uh, start to work with action script. Action script is how we're going to bring this project to life, how we're going to make it interactive. So far this whole semester, well, last semester and so far this semester, it's been a very passive project. You draw them, you animate them, they just happen. And when the end of the animation happens, it jumps back to the beginning. Wouldn't it be nice if your animation went to the end and then it ended? Or wouldn't it be nice that if you could pause or play the animation, or making a game, wouldn't it be nice that you can interact with the game, pick up an object, battle the boss, et cetera? Well, that comes from ActionScript, a coding language related to JavaScript. And we're gonna do a lot of JavaScript, not a lot. I have right here actually in my notes, the whole amount of code for the final project. And uh, it's only uh, 445 lines of code. It's a small app. A real, not a real, but a big game is like a million lines of code. So barely 400 lines, that's going to be easy. And that's going to start next time. If you've had no experience in coding, that's okay. We're going to do an intro to coding on Wednesday. And then lots of hands-on coding moving forward. And of course, I will be adding my code examples to the class canvas. I will be recording it. The assistants will be here to help. I will help, of course because this is a bit of a mind shift in that we were very artistically focused previously, drawing, painting, animating. Well, we're gonna continue that stuff, but now we also have to add the part about uh, the logic of it, the programming of it, the detail of logic. Um, I forget which is which, but they say, okay, left brain people are very artistic and right brain people are very uh, technical. One of those two, I might get them mixed up. But supposedly, one ha half of the brain is very logical, one half of the brain is very artistic. And if you feel more artistic, the logic side of it will be a little bit of a challenge to work on. And if you're a bit more logical, the artistic side is a little too frivolous for you. And, you know, both sides are right and wrong. And so um, be aware that you will need to really think about what you're doing because we're going to quickly learn computers are dumb. Even though we're seeing all of this amazing AI and that one day, you know, T2 will happen and all of that, computers are dumb unless you program them to be smart. And therefore, we're going to see when we write our code, and if we write the code wrong, the computer will completely fail and not do what you want. Obviously, we know what we want, but one, one code mistake and it doesn't work. That's why definitely get help. Definitely stay for the lab. Um, we watch the recordings, definitely check the code examples. That'll help moving forward, starting next week. So before next week, we have plenty to do this week. So let's do this. Um, okay, I'm gonna do a quick pause while I get one thing. They just updated Zoom, and here we go, pause the recording. Here we go, pause, be right back. All right, so I just needed to get this example project uh, to show you. Here's the end result. I'm going to load up here in a moment. The end result from the last time I taught the class. So every summer I teach this class, and before that, of course, CIS 125, and then it ends with this class. So part one is all about the drawing and the painting and animating. And then part two is more of a focus on the game creation. I did say last week, and I'll say it again, 
we're not, within the amount of time that we have here, we're not going to be creating a sort of a game that is, you know, uh, CSGO or Fortnite or whatever like that. Uh, we're going to be creating a game that is a little bit more interactive, that is a little bit more slower, and it is based on sort of a point and click type of a game. Um, you're going to have screenfuls of content to interact with. So uh, this focus is that so that we can all create a project together. We are all going to create a certain game together, but you're going to be kind of learning like ingredients. And therefore, you want to apply the ingredients on the side on your own game. You're going to create the class project with your version of it, your own graphics and sprites and sound. But together, we're sort of going to learn the skeleton of something. And then you're going to add onto it the, the, the meat on the bones. So together, little by little, we're learning the ingredients. The metaphors are all over the place. We're going to learn the ingredients to learn the bones for that you to add the meat. And what we mean by that is uh, it's all going to be a certain game but you're going to then make it your own because again, if, if this were a full semester, not even one semester, if this was like a two year long class, yes, you'd be able to do anything you want. But within the nine weeks that we have, the, you know, the eight weeks that we have left, we all have to at least do a starting point. I'm going to load up this example from a previous semester. It's a little bit of setup for me to fully show it to you. Oops, okay, there's that. Okay, good, actually. So uh, let me show this. Okay, before the example. Um, if we were to create, you don't, you don't have to get into animate at the moment, uh, but if you were to create a project in animate, we saw previously, okay, create a full HD project, cool. But did you ever explore any of these other tabs on the top here? For example, game. There is a section here on making games with Adobe Animate. Make an iPhone Dimensions game. Make an Android Dimensions game. Make an iPad Dimensions. This is basically to create the starting point template of these various platforms with various dimensions. Uh, if I'm going to make like the newest, most high quality Android game, here it is. You know, this is different than the HD size we've been using. That's fine. But notice it's these dimensions. And you can have a frame rate. And then there's a platform type at the bottom here. Now, a moment ago, it popped up to say something because we're going to need to do an extra step when we do this for real. But platform type, we have Action Script, we have HTML5, and one that is missing here is called Adobe Air. Adobe Air is a platform that we can use to make a game that will work with all devices. Because here I'm kind of saying, okay, let, let me create an iPhone game. But I also want to make my game work on Android phones and tablets and such. And so the platform type, which is not active yet, we will activate it eventually. Um, there's, a, there's a third type here that is not active yet, which is Adobe Air. And so we're going to be using the game templates to make various games. There's other ones on the side over here, web projects and such, and then advanced. This is very similar as well, as well, Air for iOS, Air for Android. Now, here is where, again, we'll do this a little later. Air SDK is no longer shipped with Animate in order. Please click here. So there's a little process. We'll do the process together. It's not complicated. Uh, but there's a little thing we sort of have to activate in order for us to make games with Animate. Animate is this amazing software that lets you draw and paint and animate and make games. But it doesn't have everything at once because it's a huge app. So if you want to do the next level, the highest level of let's make games, we need to activate the Air SDK, which I'll show you next time. It's not hard at all. For the moment, I need to do this, so close your eyes. I'll show you how to do this properly later. Uh, but I need to set this up at the moment in order for you to show in order for me to show you the example project, and we will do it together. Very pretty easy. 
Um, but let me show the example project. Do a little bit of other setup over here. So just one moment. But this is the project. This is like the this is the this is the skin and bones version of the project that we made last semester. You're gonna make a way better version. And I've also uh, got examples to show people from people previous semesters. Get to that in a moment. Just need to do a little bit of behind the scenes stuff here. We're gonna to learn to do all of this, but let me preview it here first. Um, so some sort of intro screen, we're gonna start this off basic, then you're gonna to add to it, make it much better. Some sort of intro screen where you have, okay, start or help. Imagine in a moment, there's gonna be music playing here as well. So, okay, a couple of buttons. We're gonna to learn to make buttons that actually do something. I want to know, how does this game work? Well, I'm going to click the help button. What that's going to do is it's going to go over to a scene that is going to show how to play or something or the backstory of the game or whatever. Again, I'm showing you the pieces, the ingredients. You're going to make this way better. Some screen elements can be clicked. Others can be clicked and dragged. Don't be afraid to explore. Okay, I know how to play the game now. I'll press back. That'll take me back to the previous scene where I can finally start the game. Clicking start will then take me to this first scene here. I'm outside the scary castle or whatever environment that you previously thought of. Someone had like a cool Arctic adventure uh, movie from back on part one. Someone had a basketball game project that was going on. So, okay, um, I'm getting to this very first scene here, this first interactive screen. And again, imagine this is eventually going to be on a real device, on an Android, on an iPhone, on a tablet. And there's going to be music playing and stuff and animation and stuff. So I'm going to tap on the door to open it. Then there'll be a little animation that plays that opens the door and it'll make a nice creaking sound and such. That'll then take me to the next screen. Okay, I'm in front of the scary mansion. Now, when I'm doing the lecture, I'm going to do it in a very obvious way and in a very not professional way in terms of the things that are going to be interactive are going to be very obviously interactive. Why do you think the things on this screen are red? They are interactive. When you make your own version of the game, it doesn't have to be a scary castle. It could be whatever idea you had back on part one, but there's going to be interactivity that happens on a screen. There could be planes flying by, stars twinkling, a river running. There could be, uh, you know, any amount of background stuff happening, your character could say, what a terrible night to have a curse. You know, anything could happen. And then you interact with the screen. Um, I'll show the interaction in a moment, but somehow you interact with this screen. Somehow what, you climb the tree, you go to the door, you pick up that rock, somehow you interact. After you get past this screen, you're inside of the main hallway, okay? Uh, it's very, very light, but there is a there's a clickable area on the right side of the hallway. There's also a clickable area on the left side of the hallway. Maybe that painting is clickable. What if I turn the painting over? Is there a secret passageway there? Is there a treasure? Am I going to build up my HP? Sky's the limit. Let's say I go to the right. All the way to the right. What's going to happen here is a creature is going to come at me, and I got to defeat it somehow before it gets me. And if I don't defeat it in time, bad ending. There's my tombstone. Okay, well, what if instead, yeah, the creature's coming at me, and in time I'm able to pick up the sword and use it on the creature and battle it and defeat its hit points. Okay, well, the creature will, will go away, and then I can, um, and I can go through that door. The creature's protecting the door. What happens if I go through that? I got the goal, so I can replay it or I can exit. Now for the game purposes, for the time that we have in the semester, I mean, we will not be able to create the next Fortnite. We will not be able to create the next Skyrim. We will not be able to complete, uh, create the next insert game here. We have a limited amount of time. And most of this, as I said, this is almost 500 lines of coding. 
that we're going to learn. So for this simple game that we made here, 500 lines of coding. So imagine what the big AAA titles are, millions of lines of coding with a whole room full of people working on it. It's going to be that only you are going to make your game, and we've got about 400 lines to work on. Yes. Excuse me, what is how many, how many, how many whole lines have a regular game? Millions. Lots and lots of lines of code because it has to do a lot, and it's very complex. So, yeah, I don't doubt millions of lines of code. Ours is much more doable, 400 lines. Well, I went back over here in the hallway. Okay, what about if we take a left path? If we go left, what's going to happen here is um, it doesn't show it yet, but a bunch of keys are going to drop from the ceiling. A bunch of keys. One of those keys is the correct one to go through the hallway. Okay, cool. I'll just pick up the correct key. Yeah, but you also have to do within the time limit before the spikes get you. So if you don't do this puzzle by the time limit of the spikes coming out to get you, then what do you think? Bad ending. If you do find the key and use the key within the right time limit, okay, good ending. And in this example that we're going to learn together, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine screens of my game. You could make 40 screens if you want. You can make seven endings if you pick up all of the treasures and raise your HP and whatever. But can you do it within the time limit? A lot of the times when people don't get the best grade is because they run out of time. Their drawings are great. Their coding is great. But they run out of time. Their game is not complete. Not a good grade. I have to grade on a complete game, not on really good ideas that are almost there. No, I need a complete game. There's going to be plenty of ways for you to customize this game. Again, we're going to do like a scary mansion sort of thing, but it's basically point and click interacting with what's on the screen. You're going to be able to drag and drop stuff, move things over, slide that painting over, pick things up, uh, battle the boss, raise your hit points, collect this item. You, you need the seven treasures to unlock whatever. So, this is going to be the sort of vague starting point of things. And of course, we can add way more to it. Let me actually play it to show you what this would look like. I do it on the simulator, but eventually this is going to be on a real device. Got a little trap right there. Let me fix that. Um, a trap in the code. Don't worry about that. So if we um, see this, we're going to be able to test our projects in the simulator and then eventually, of course, put it onto real devices. Sound on this. sound on this. Okay, imagine there's sound. I know there's sound, but there doesn't seem to be playing, so that's okay. All right, so imagine this is my Android device or my iPhone or my tablet or whatever. I click on help. Go to help. There could be way more complexity here. Animation happening. Um, a character pops out and talks at you, whatever. Go back. Down here on the bottom left, if you're noticing, there's some feedback happening. The code is running and there's feedback happening down back over here. Uh, I go start the adventure over here. There's the door, different ways to interact. On this one, I just tap the door, it opens up. Happened a little too fast, but the door opens up, a little creaking sound, we, we start here. All right, I wanna get inside. Okay, I'll just open the, the front door. Uh, nope, that one seems to be locked. It's gonna vibrate or do whatever. Okay, well, what about if I try to climb the tree? Oops, I'm too heavy, I broke the tree. Hmm, okay, this window. So the window is locked, but maybe there's a way to get into the window. Uh, if I look around in my environment, again, if this was the fully final game, it would not be so obvious, but what if there's something to interact with? How about this rock? 
what if I pick up this rock and maybe toss it at the window? That worked. So I broke into the house. Uh, okay, I got two ways to go. Maybe interact with other things. Maybe try to open that tile down there. Is there something in there? But I'll go to the right. Here comes a creature. Oh, I got to defeat it in time. Start to tap it, try to defeat it. There we go. I, it was pretty weak. So yeah, I hit the boss enough times it died. And then I can go through the hallway to the good end. It's just going to be static for the moment. Of course, as you as you start to brainstorm and get ideas, you're going to think about, I want this screen to look like this and to have this music and to have all of these possibilities. I'm going to replay it. This time, again, what if I don't battle the boss fast enough? You know, I can't um, fast enough to defeat it. And then it gets to me and game over. This one, of course, needs the restart to, to start over. Start it over. Left side. So you're going to be playing your own game, beta testing it to make sure it works, checking your code, getting help. Lots could go wrong. So I'm going to go to the left. There's the random keys. I think it's that one. That wasn't the right one. I'm dead. So it could have more feedback. It could have more action, more reaction, more animation about playing a sound. Or the narrator is saying, that's the wrong one. Try again. Lots could happen, of course. This is the result of a summer. And this is uh, interactive. It's interesting. It's got a plot. Uh, the first time someone plays it, they're going to be trying to learn from their mistakes and such. And you might say, well, is that it? Only, you know, seven screens? Well, yeah, that's how much we had in the, that's how much we're going to have time in the summer. If you are working on your own at home, at the library, at every moment that you have, yeah, you're going to make 50 screens of an adventure. Amazing. So at the minimum together, we're going to do something like this, some starting point where you're going to change it to be the space station with the creature coming after you and you have to turn on the engines to get away from the planet or what else? You're going to be a, um, some of your movies, you're going to be a fairy that's going through the forest that uh, needs to find their parents, but you have to first go through the maze and such. So what was your movie back on part one? How could that segue into an interactive game? Or how can you redo the movie from part one to be an interactive game? Have a lot of possibilities. So I'm gonna write some notes here. I'll give you these notes. We'll also do also do some feedback, brainstorming in the chat box here. So tell me in the chat box. I might have asked already, but tell me in the chat box, have any of you ever uh, done any programming in any class or on your own, any language? Tell me in the chat, any web programming, game programming, maybe in high school or somewhere, just any feedback on any amount of coding, any point. So 152, no programming yet, that's fine. Then uh, in the web design classes, we often cover HTML, CSS, and if you go further, JavaScript. JavaScript is related to ActionScript, which is the language we will cover. If you've not done any amount of programming, that's fine. We're starting from zero. So we're going to say a few things here. Our game will be programmed in ActionScript a cousin of JavaScript. So if you have some experience with any programming language, that'll be valuable. Programming language is useful, but not required. You just need to have a mentality of detail. What else, ladies? What, what does a programmer need? Tell me in the chat, you know, what does a programmer need 
to succeed in any class. You need to have a mentality of detail oriented. What else? We'll get a few answers there in a moment from the assistants. But to be a programmer, it's not about you know, intelligence. It's about dealing or dealing with details. And also you need time to read and fix your code. That's going to happen a lot because we're going to see a code that says, you know, trace end is different than a code that says trace the end. It looks exactly the same to me. Note to the computer, capital T is different than lowercase t. And trace with a lowercase is the correct command. And trace with a capital T is the worst command ever. So details, organization is going to be important too. You need to organize yourself. Files and code. It's time. Set expectations based on deadlines. We're going to have so many ideas flowing today, and you're going to want to do all of them. And I don't want to be pessimistic, but you're probably going to be able to only do 10% of them if you only rely on class time. If you want many more of your ideas to come to life, you're going to spend much more time on it. But there's the ultimate final deadline of the class, which is, I don't know, August something. When does the class end? August uh, 3rd or something. So there are deadlines. Take notes and the like. Take breaks. Take breaks. And re, you know, clear your mind for a moment. As you're staring at code all day long, it's all going to run together. It's all going to blur together. It's a foreign language, right? I might know English. I might know Spanish. I might know Japanese. Now you're going to learn action script. It's got its own language. And take breaks to reset your mind. I'm just trying to say, think about... Um, don't just go at it forever. Take take time off. Go, go hydrate. Take lunch. Think about what you're doing. Uh, why is that error happening? Go do something else. Come back to it. Then you're going to notice, oh, I mistyped that code. So breaks are really, really helpful. Um, we're going to see as we get in there, take notes in your code. You're writing the code. You can do something like this, which is make a note. You can make a note in your code that says the correct command. And another note that says the wrong command. You can write notes in your code as you write your code to give yourself hints and notes and reminders and such. And save. Back up your work show that about how to do the backups and such. But this is some ideas here. Thank you for that. So to be a programmer, and I'll say one more thing. It's not about intelligence. It's about time. So longer that you have to do this, the more you will succeed. Some people will, will get it right away. How do I write the command? Other people, you'll have to write it 10 times. And then on the 11th time, now you get it and you'll never have a problem again. So don't feel that this is something insurmountable. It's time that really helps with any amount of programming. If it doesn't click or doesn't make sense the first, second or third time, by the fourth or fifth or 10th time, it will. And the examples that I will eventually show from previous classes, they all have the same thing that you will have. Limited amount of time, but with lots of ideas. Let's say here, we are all creating a point and click style game with on-screen interactive elements. 
and multiple endings. Haunted house. But you will create your version for the final project. So remind me in the chat, uh, when you did back part one, what was the general plot of your of your um, of your animation? Um, I remember someone had a penguin penguin's adventure in the Arctic as well. What did what did you all do? So also, it was one about like a a big basketball game. Miguel, Neff, Sergio, Gabriel, remind me, what did you do? What was your previous part one movie main plot? Just to put a few ideas here. Together, we're all going to do this haunted house, and we saw how it was interactive. We'll put some of your ideas here, and then we'll think about how we can make them interactive. All right. Warehouse looter. So... is a part where we'll do some of this interactivity. Okay, so on the haunted house we saw here, ideas for interactivity. Um, tap to open a simple door. Interact with a dead end element. We tried to climb the tree, but it broke. We couldn't get to the second floor of the house by climbing the tree, it broke. So there was an, uh, a dead end element. Okay, what else do we have here? Um, break a window to get in. Well, that was hit detection, technically. We had the, um, we had one element that we interact with, touching another element, rock breaking a window. Okay, what else did we have? We had a mini boss to defeat. It had lower its hit points, right? I'm taking the idea of what's happening and what does that mean as a sort of a game or as programming. So there was some hit points that we had to lower down to zero to defeat the mini boss. Had a um, time limit to find the right key. We had random numbers, so we will see. Then, um, good ending, bad ending. We take the warehouse looter idea. Thank you for that. No one else responded. Please respond, it will be helpful. Um, so on the warehouse leader game, here's some things we can think about. So let's respond to this stuff, please. Uh, let's think about if we were going to make a game called warehouse looter. And it's in the style of a point and click type of a game. What are some things that might be how you play the game? What do you do in that sort of a game? What can you interact with? So let's say, first of all, um, maybe at the very beginning of the game, pick your character. What if it's a gang of five people and they all have the idea, we're going to break into this warehouse that has all of the loot. Well, maybe one of the first things that I'm going to do in that game is pick my character because they have different stats. One is better at stealth. One is better at the lock picking. One is better at speed. You can only pick one though, so I'm gonna pick one of them. That's gonna affect other parts of the game. Different stats to affect later levels or screens. Okay, so I pick my character. And then maybe I'm, I got a map selection screen of which particular warehouse to loot. So pick the warehouse. Uh, select easy, medium, or hard. 
difficulty or levels. Well, I just started playing uh, this game for the first time. Maybe I'll select the easy one. So that's going to have, you know, 10 screens instead of 50 for the hard one. And it's going to have one mini boss instead of seven for the hard one. When I picked a particular warehouse, then I need to get into it, the very first screen of it. We saw there, pick front door or side door or back door to B and D. So different branching paths here. This is gonna to start to get me to the idea then of the break the break the window. Yeah, exactly. This is gonna get me into the idea of it's gonna it's gonna get into this flow chart. I'm gonna do two things at once here. I'm also gonna talk about the flow chart as we brainstorm here. I'm gonna do this in Microsoft Paint. I've got I've got um I've got animate open, but I'll do this in paint just to show you with any software. Um Yes, this will be the homework. Screen goes to this screen. And these screens go to this screen. Obviously, I'm just gonna I'm not gonna look for blank boxes like this. That's gonna get you a nice bad grade. You're going to instead fill in the details as I noted in the in the assignment. All right, well, this is the warehouse front door. As I said, you could draw little sketches here if you want or write text. But maybe the first thing that I'm seeing here is, let's see, how do you draw a warehouse? Uh, do something like that. There's like boxes over here, I guess. So the very first thing that you're seeing is um, my very first screen. And then, of course, we all drove up on the getaway car on the front door for some reason. But our car is right here. This is the very first screen I'm going to interact with. It had some text here saying... Warehouse, this is after I picked the easy warehouse. So warehouse front. Well, as we noted here, how about if we are going to um, front door, side door, break the window. So let's say this path over here to the left was break the window. What happens if I go through the break the window route? And what happens if I go through the side door route? Um, from that path, figured out, okay, from if I went through the side, through the part of the warehouse where I'm breaking the window, there's something here to interact with. And then that'll take me either to this way or that way. I'm gonna say this is one of the bad endings. Going through the broken window. Way too complex here, but let's say there are the two ideas that if we break the window, well, we have here police are there right away versus there's a hallway. So somehow, do the coding, do the interactivity, that you have these two possibilities. Okay, there's the police or there's a hallway. So am I going to sneak past the police, but my speed level is too low, therefore it gets me to the bad ending? Or am I going to sneak by the police, but the speed was good enough so that I snuck past them, and then I go into the hallway to the next scene here of a hallway? So yeah, we're mapping out the idea here, basically. This will be the homework. Um, this brainstorming, writing text and ideas and such is not the homework. It'll be very valuable for you to start to write down your ideas of what you want your game to be. The homework will be the flow chart. So we're going to do some of this together first. So in the bad ending, here is jail. So jail.
Ours right there. Ours, more prisoners. Second level up there. All right, so the um, bad ending here got me to a jail. Uh, if instead I did have enough speed uh, attribute or stealth attribute, I go to a hall. And then within the hallway here, I have these multiple paths that I could go down through. Do I want to go on this route? This route. Possibilities of a path. when I said about the size of your of your graphic um, so I could set it up that well one of these two is the is another bad ending straight to the jail versus another path that goes to the good ending you found the merch And then I'll figure out what's on the side door over there. But what I'm looking for in the assignment. Okay, so I got one, two, three, four, five, six. I've got six. You only need to do five. I've already got to six. I don't doubt that you'll turn in one with like 20. That's great. You might not be able to make all 20 screens, 20 interactive elements. But at least here, this is giving me an idea. And when, as I progress, as you progress in the semester and you figure out this is going to be too complicated, I'm going to remove this whole subplot of this over here. That's fine. You're not going to be required that if you create 20 screens, you're going to make 20 screens. This is just your general idea flow chart for how it's going to eventually be. What else do I want to do over here? You pick the front door. So then if break window, you have by the guard. If your skill is high enough, you do sneak next screen. Sneak. And then I can be as detailed as I want here. For the beginning, uh, we, we, we're not really going to think about the coding side of things. Just here's an idea that I want to do. Figuring out how to do it in coding then comes later. Like, okay, how do I do this whole skill check and so forth? And how do I build my XP? Don't worry about that yet. You're just putting ideas. You're getting ideas down so that then you can decide what is a priority for second place, which one maybe I'll do in version two one day. You saw the example from the previous semester in about 500 lines of code, what we were able to do there, interact with things, pick them up, move them, time limits, there's a mini boss, good ending, bad ending, plenty more that we can do. One thing that the that the example doesn't have over here is a, is a HUD, right? An HUD, a heads up display. What about if I get that idea that I've got stuff on my screen, on my heads up display, that I've got my name on the corner and my HP and which weapons I've collected and time, game time and such. Yeah, there's plenty of things that you can do still with this type of game. You know, we're not making a shoot 'em up. We're not making an RPG and such. We're making an interactive point and click type of a game that can have a lot of cool ideas. That's what I want to see on this first assignment. What are the ideas? of the various screens that stuff is going to happen. Assignment, there's also, tell us a little bit about the big idea of the game. Don't forget that item number seven, also a general idea of what the game is. We could say here, people do it this way. Um, say uh, strategy 
um, either make the game as a continuation, continuation of your movie back from part one, redo your movie from part one as an interactive game. First one. Most people had a sort of to be continued type of a movie. Very few people have a complete story. Great. Now what's the continuation? What's next? The um, the next plot? What you didn't get to animate? Make that interactive. You had the idea of your character trying to find her parents, this fairy character trying to find the parents in the lost woods, and it ended up to be continued. Okay, well, now that's going to be the game. The character going through the lost woods to find their their parents, and then they're trapped in the amber prison, so they've got to go get the crystal sword, this and that. So most people do that. They continue the idea from the game. You could, as a possibility, um, redo your your passive movie as a game. Definitely check with myself or the assistants on how to do that because that's harder. And then there's the or, no one does this and I don't recommend to do this or start over. Completely new idea. It doesn't have to be dependent on your original character from part one or the background or the plot. Start over completely, sure. But I just think you, you're going to waste all of the effort you did back on part one. Definitely, my plot here is, you know, an adventure going through this haunted house. Um, you could do a version of that, although it will not be acceptable to just turn in what you're going to learn in class. You're going to redraw the castle and you're going to add your own music and your own screens and such. But together, we're going to make this haunted house adventure point and click game. You're going to be learning the ingredients. During lecture, you'll learn, set a project for mobile device gaming. Write code for screen-to-screen -screen interactivity. Write code for object interactivity code for branching paths other stuff like hit points and um, you know experience levels and that RPG sorts of elements um, we'll touch on some of those things but you're going to be learning the ingredients and, and click style game. And once again, your final project will be a version of the point and click game. Learn the code, change it how you need to, change the graphics definitely and the sound and such, but together we're going to learn all the code. Show another sort of example here for inspiration. There's this classic old Nintendo 8-bit game called Shadowgate. Let's see, Shadowgate NES long play. This is 50 minutes long. Uh, let's let's watch this for a little moment to sort of show another example this genre. Have sound. Why are we not getting sound? Okay, hold on one moment. Um, So let's watch this a moment.
right, so this one is, you know, an old Nintendo game. There's some text that's appearing on the screen to kind of tell you general plot. There's an interactive area of the screen. There's your inventory, goods on the side there. The plot is uh, going on a little bit here. And it lets you interact. So this is, skip all of this. Okay, so then you have all of these. This is going to be way more, way more complex than we're going to do. But you have all of these, look at a thing, open a, a thing, take a thing, hit a thing, use a thing, and a little mini map. Up in this particular screen, you have these areas where you can move to or interact. And so on this first screen here, you got the little hand moving around. Well, they tap the um, they tap that skull and as if by magic the skull rises and there's a key in there okay so I gotta go take it we're not gonna do it where you have to like tell it that I'm about to take I'm about to look we'll do it simpler than that but obviously there he's gonna they are going to take the key they're gonna go to the spot take the key click on it on the right spot. <laughs> so key one is in hand. I added key one to my inventory. But what do I do with it? Now I need to open the door. So I go to open the door because I've got the key. The door is open. You couldn't open the door before having the key. So we can do something like that where you have collect some things into your inventory to interact with other elements of the game. Um, that is a thing that we can do in the class. Door is open. Move forward. All right, so there's a little animation going from one scene to the next. Uh, we know how to do animation. So, okay, an animation. Then it goes to the next spot here. And then there were eyes that appeared for a moment. And there's some text here. A pitiful wizard, Lakomir, was a fool to send a buffoon like you to stop me. Okay, so we had a little animation. We've got some text. We've got some plot. And then after this plot happens here, then we have um, the mini-map is saying, you can go forward, you can go back, you can go to the right. Well, for what, what I see on screen is there's a door at the front. There's a little mini-door on the side. There's a couple of torches. So obviously the character is going to take the torches. In this particular game, if you don't have torches... The screen goes dark and then you die because you can't see inside. And then if you want to go to the right, well, that key, that door opens the door. Forward and we go to the next screens. And this is one of these classic Nintendo games with instant death and such. But in this long play, it takes about an hour to go through the whole game. There's a final dragon over there at the end, too. There's a pit of over here that you have to lower that and how to use that treasure and that item. So this is just kind of an inspiration for this type of a game, a point-and-click type of a game, and therefore it, it's a good sort of uh, starting point for us. And this one, I can't go forward because the uh, Sphinx needs a treasure and such. So we got to a particular screen, but it was too hot because uh, <clears throat> and it was too hot, so you couldn't go forward. Well, hey, wait a minute. I picked up an item over here, the uh, cloak, the asbestos cloak, and then I can equip it to myself. And now I can try to go through the flame room. To the flame room because they got this other item first. Open, but then suddenly so our version that I showed here from back on part one, obviously that even that simple Nintendo game, that was thousands of lines of code, and that game was made back in what, like 1980 eight or something. 
So our game that we're going to make, it's not going to be this complex, but it's kind of going to be in that general idea um, that there's elements to interact with on screen, 1989. So probably before most of you were born. And so that game, thousands of lines of code on the classic Nintendo, and there had been versions before it, and there are versions afterwards. In the amount of time that we have here, and what we want to learn is not to become an expert in making a game, of course, but to become better at programming. That's the idea. And as we talked here, well, getting better at programming means that you have all of these various skills, being able to organize yourself, being detail-oriented, noting your code, backing up your code, having the time to work on it and taking breaks and managing expectations. You hear all the time about this game was supposed to be out. You know, this new Zelda game is being pushed back again. Well, they needed to write, you know, they needed to fix line 7 million point two out of the out of the rest of the code that wasn't working. The link kept falling through the ice. So you're going to be your own programmer and your own graphic designer and music composer and uh, coder and tester and all of that that by the big companies, they have a whole team of people doing that. You've got to learn the programming side of things, make sure it all works because the grading will be based on does your code work? You may have the most amazing graphics ever. And some of you, I saw some really great graphics and animation. That's not the point of future assignments. The point of future assignments is the code. If I expect to click on that rock and pick it up to hit the window with it and it doesn't work, it doesn't work. That's a bad grade. That's supposed to happen, doesn't happen, it's a bad grade. I don't care if it's the most realistic rock I've ever seen and the animation is beautiful. If the code doesn't work, it doesn't work. That's going to be the focus on future assignments. Code. think on, on the ideas that we've done or on the lectures that we've done. Uh, I think we've gotten some good ideas, those of you that responded. Uh, but we've got some ideas about sort of the kind of plots and, and such. And we have an idea of what a flow chart is. So I think we're going to kind of end earlier today. But this is a big focus on this, on, on today's lecture. On, on Wednesday, we're going to do some hands-on intro to coding. I'm going to start fresh with that on, on Wednesday. But for, for today, I want to give you the time to start this assignment, to start to think about what you want your game to do, to maybe write some notes on text. You don't have to turn this in, but make yourself some notes. But what you do have to do and turn in for the assignment is make some basic, make a basic flowchart, Sh show some basic screens that you want to, your game to be about. Something like this, this is, a, this, is, this is an A, this is a full credit. Well, I still need to fill in this one right here, but this is, this is an A level A work right here, because it's telling me you're going to go from here to here. You're going to have these things to do, basic sketch, a little bit of text. Cool. That's enough. If you want to do more than that, that's fine. But again, check the details of the assignment, at least five screens. And I noted four specific ones. You have to have four specific screens. Check the assignment. One of them will be different. And you can add more than that if you want. Put 20 screens if you want. That's nice. That's interesting. That's creative. I want to see how creative you are. You're not going to need to make all 20 screens in the game. And don't worry about how do I program this at the moment? Don't worry about the programming side of things. Worry about the plot. Worry about what your game is going to do. Pick your character. Pick the warehouse skill level. You know, that sort of thing. Consider that. We'll deal with the coding when the time comes for it. So... Yeah, we'll end at this point. I'll end the lecture. I'll put my notes up on Canvas and so forth. If you want to stay and work, great. If you want to work on your own pace, that's fine too. When we come back on Wednesday, it'll be our first introduction to coding. This is week two of our class.